Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So earlier on this week, I published a YouTube short with a video that was made entirely in React and it's done using this tool called Remotion. So in today's video, we're gonna do a quick tutorial to see how that works. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So to get started with Remotion, all you need to do is type yarn create video and that's gonna create you a sample project just like what we have here on the left hand side. So I've just done that and I've not touched anything else. And if you run npm start, it's gonna start the um, local dev server and it's got this kind of video player thing on the right hand side. So we'll go over the basics here just so we can understand the, the basic setup. So in terms of the app itself on the right hand side here, you have the sidebar, which is showing a bunch of compositions. So your compositions are basically renderable uh, components, right? So they each have their own kind of um, videos and a composition is typically made up of sequences and the sequences is basically telling, um, telling the video which frames to display the content in. And that's what we have here, three sequences. And then of course you have the actual um, video player here on, on the right hand side. So from a code perspective, we have the index file, which is basically the entry point, register root. It's just a function you're always gonna, gonna call. And then within that, you'll see our, our composition. So that's the three matching there. And then the composition, you define a few props, the frames per second, the duration, width, height, etc. And then the component here basically goes in and this displays all the different sequences. And that's basically how the, the videos are made up. Cool, so I'd recommend having a play around with this. This will basically give you an idea of how um, these animations etc. work. We're gonna start from scratch and just do the very, kind of a very basic animation. We'll just basically take this text component. Once you learn the fundamentals of how an animation works, uh, basically the rest is is just building up uh, on top of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into our uh, root component just after the index. And I'm just gonna basically remove everything, remove these additional compositions. We'll just keep one. And we'll remove um, all these additional files. And we're just gonna start from scratch. And we're just gonna create a new component called um, main. And that's just right now, let's just have that return. Um, yeah, I'll just return an H1, hello world. And what we can do is we can update this composition. So the ID here is important, by the way. So if you change the ID here, just make sure that you also update the package JSON. So npm start, that's standard. npm build is how you actually build um, build the video. And when you're building a video, it's based off of one composition. So in this case, um, it's going to be main. Of course, you can parameterize this or, or do whatever, whatever you need to do. Um, the component here, we're going to change that to, to main as well duration of frames. So that's going to be based off of the frames per second. So I'm going to say 30 frames per second. Let's make this, we'll just make a three second video times three FPS is fine. And this is the, the, the resolution of your video. So I'm going to change this to be portrait instead of landscape. So let's do um, 540 and um, I think it's 960 there. And you can pass through default process. You're going to go through to the main component. We're just going to remove that completely. And if I come back here on the right and refresh, you can see our main component and yeah, that's it. So here by default, it's going to be a black screen. So you can't see our hello world. So what we actually need to do is wrap our hello world and um, create basically a div with a, a background of white color. So one thing you'll notice with Remotion is there's some default styling in some of the components and they're just a bit weird. So you, you need to do a few kind of couple of tricks to, to get around them. So one of the main ones is the, the default um, kind of background here is, is is black and it's flex with a with a hundred percent height. So you'll see that if I do a style here with a background color of uh, white, that's just going to um, take up the whole kind of vertical space. So what we can do here, because I know it's a flex, we can just flex grow that and do that to one. So for the most part, if you're kind of moving things around, especially within sequences, we'll see in a moment, you're going to be using an absolute and you're going to give it kind of a fixed position. This is fine, it's a video, it doesn't need to be responsive. Um, don't do this in your, your standard websites. So now that we've got Hello World, let's get in a couple of sequences. So we'll just do kind of like a main title and a subtitle. So let's put in a, a sequence for the for the main title here. And uh, a sequence is gonna be taken from. So this is basically the frame that it starts off at. We're just gonna say the start off at frame zero. And duration, we'll just put the title uh, for the full duration of the of the video itself. Cool. And you can also actually, there's a couple of hooks that are important here. So there's a hook called use video config, which basically gives you all the, I guess, all the information from this composition. Um, and this is accessible anywhere within within the tree. So you can take the duration of frames, you can take the, the FPS, etc. So you could, in theory, say, hey, I want this to be the, the full duration, etc. Um, yeah, you can you can use them to, to your advantage. And 
let's create a couple of components here. So one for the title, and that's just going to be an H1. Um, we'll just do remotion, and then we'll do a similar one, which is just going to be a subtitle. There we go. And I'm just going to add the title to this component here, and I'll just add a second sequence. And this sequence will come in a bit later on, so we'll just bring it in at one second. So um, that's 30 frames. Or again, we could, in theory, just take FPS times one. We know that's going to be one second, right? And this one's just going to show the subtitle. There we go. So now that we've got our first couple of sequences in place, you can come over here to the um, to the app, and if you just press spacebar, it's going to run through the title, and then you're going to see the subtitle is going to come in there. Um, you'll see again, these are on top of each other. That's because within a sequence, everything is kind of absolutely positioned. Uh, and the cool thing about this, if I just expand this here to the left-hand side, you can see that everything is inspectable, essentially. So even though it's a video, um, we can jump into here, and we can check the actual um, you know, the code, the elements, and you can see here that this is the sequence with our with our text, position absolute, and you can see the, the, the elements there. So we can basically work around that uh, in whatever way you want in terms of CSS. In my case here, I'm just going to put in some styling. Um, I'm just going to add absolute positions to both of these and place them exactly where I want them to be. So there we go. I've added some absolute positioning um, and a bit of styling to, to the pieces of text. So let's get on to animating these. So to keep this short, what we're going to do is we're just going to animate the subtitle um, only and the same logic kind of applies from animating one thing to, to everything else. So let's go ahead. Um, there's a hook that is quite important in terms of animation, which is uh, use current frame. Um, basically, that brings back exactly what it does. It brings back the current frame, but it's within the context of the sequence. So it's always going to start, a sequence is always going to start at zero and then going to go over to the duration of the um, the, the sequence in frames. So this use current frame within the subtitle is always going to start at zero regardless of where the actual frame is and it's going to be um, in this case duration of frames which is I'll go up to the top here it's going to be 90 but actually in fact I, this one we probably want this to be 60 because it's starting at one second so um, the video ended anyway it doesn't matter but yeah so this was going to be frames going to be from zero to, to 60. so if we wanted to give this kind of a, a fade in um, animation what essentially we're looking for is we're looking for the opacity to be zero at the start. And then as time goes over, it's going to get to one. So how could you do that? Well, you could just say, all right, well, opacity is going to be um, if the frame is more than and you can give it any kind of time you want. So let's just keep this animation for one second, right? So if the frame is more than 30, i.e. it's one second because we have 30 FPS, then return the opacity as one. Uh, otherwise, we're going to do frame minus, uh, sorry, frame divided by 30. So we're just going to divide the frame by um, the length of the animation that we want. And then we can just take this opacity and apply it there. Um, I think I've spelled that wrong. There we go. And if you play this, so I'm just going to go right over to the start. The opacity is going to be zero. And basically, as it goes along, each frame, it's going to come in, right? And that's the very basics to animation. Simple as that. Now, this can get a bit tedious over time, so Remotion have got their own function to help you with that, and that's basically a, a function called interpolate. So if we do opacity here, and let's just add that there so it doesn't complain, we can see there's an interpolate function. The first argument of the function is going to be basically the, the variable number. In this case, it's going to be our frame, so what's the number that's going to change? And then the next two arguments are going to be the input range and the output range. So given that number, when it is anywhere between zero and 30 because that's where we want the range to be when it's zero going up to 30 we want you to output the number zero to one so what it does is it essentially takes this range and it maps it to this one so at zero it's going to be zero at 30 it's going to be one and it's going to map everything in between so it's just going to handle all that for us so we can remove this and if we save this it's basically going to do the exact same thing so that's one way of handling animations. Um, there is another way using the spring function. Uh, now, interpolate is basically, you know, you're given exact uh, timings and exact frames. So it's quite kind of rigid. Spring is a bit more kind of bouncy. It's, you don't give it the exact timing. You just tell it where you want it to be and you kind of give it some parameters in terms of physics and it will just basically handle that, that timing for you. So let's try out the um, spring function by translating the text uh, a bit further up. So 
what we can do is we can start off with the, the spring function. And for the most part, you're going to take in FPS and frames, which is just going to be directly from um, the, the hooks. So basically, frame is the variable number. FPS is just so it knows um, how fast to go. And we can get the FPS from the same hook we used earlier on. So we use uh, video config. And then there are two further parameters, which is from and to. And they basically tell you what range um, do you want the outputs to be. So defaults from 0 to 1. So in our case, from is fine. We'll start off at 0. And 2, what we'll do is we'll move it up um, 100 pixels. So we'll just do uh, 2 is minus 100. And the final piece of config you can add here is um, is basically a, a field called config. And this is where you change some physics aspects. So you can change the mass, the dampness, the stiffness, etc., just to give it a slightly different feel. So let's add this and see how that looks. So I've just added the transform with the translate y, and this is taking the translate value uh, in pixels. So if we play this from here, you can see that it's kind of doing this um, bouncy animation here. Cool, and I think that's pretty much it. There's probably one final thing worth going over, um, and it's a little bonus tip with the spring uh, animations. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly animate each individual word, just so you can see how to kind of offset um, some animations based off of based off of the uh, the frame. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pop this into a string. Um, we're going to wrap it in a block. We're just going to split this by, I guess, this the space character. And we're going to map over it, and we're going to convert. That's going to be each word to a uh, span. So we're just going to pop in word here, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to take these two, the opacity and the kind of the the transform, and we're going to actually add it to the word itself. So let's add style here, and we'll just paste those in. And what we need to do just to get this working is we just need to add a couple of additional styles. So inline block, and we'll just add a margin left to, to each of these just so they kind of spread out the words. So if we were doing this, it's still going to be the exact same animation because all of them are happening at the exact same time. So what we can do is with the spring method, and same with if you wanted to do it with the, actually we'll do it for both the opacity, basically the, the frame number, we can kind of manipulate that for each instance, and that's going to give us a bit of an offset. So right now, it's always starting at zero, but we want the first word to start as frame zero. We want the second word to start actually a few seconds later, or a few, sorry, a few frames later. So what we can do is we can just simply turn this into a function, in this case, translate and the opacity, and we can basically pass in a delay for each one. So in this case, I'm mapping over each word. I'm going to take the index, and I'm just going to pass in the index, and that basically gives it the, the kind of the order. And if we go over here and we turn these into functions um, that take in uh, uh, an index, I guess it's more of uh, an, an offset, and that's going to be a number. And then what we can do is we can basically multiply or we can take away from the frame the offset. Uh, there we go, just like that. And I think in this case, actually, we need to change that to a named so frame we're just taking away the offset and what that should hopefully give us and i'll move frame by frame oops let's just change this to opacity there we go that should be a bit better so if we look over this frame by frame we can see that there's kind of each word is going in a bit faster than the other one and if we want to kind of emphasize this what we can do is we can just add a, a multiple on top of the offset so we can just add you know let's multiply this by five and same over here and now it's just going to be a bit more exaggerated. So now when we play this, um, the first one starts at frame zero. That's fine. The second one is actually at minus something because it'll be minus one times five. So it'll be minus five. And the input range doesn't doesn't work until it gets to zero. So it's going to be a bit delayed. And the same you know, with the next one, so on and so forth. So if I play this now, the title's always there. And the, side the subtitle is going to just kind of bounce in word by word. Cool. So the final step now is just to build your project. So you can do that by running npm run build. And it's worth noting that this has a dependency on FFmpeg, so it'll give you instructions on how to, to download it if you don't have it. And uh, there's also instructions on the documentation. And now that that's done, I'm just going to hit open, and we can bring this up in the finder. And then we just, yeah, run the out.mp4, and there we go. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. And I'll see you in the next one.